my lovely imps, I have to admit something. I feel a little bad about something that I've done and an approach that I've had on my stream. And it's not the worst thing in the world, but given that the stream, unless you're watching this as a video, which you can go watch the VOD if you wanna see the other apologies that I had to do. But given that this stream, uh, and I guess this video now, uh, is, is about apologizing for mistakes that I've made, some silly, some serious, uh, I wanted to talk about one that's a little more serious. And uh, this one, came, like my awareness of the, the need to talk about this came from a conversation that I had while I was on Deep Fat Fried. Um, as many of you know, I recently co-hosted the Deep Fat Fried podcast with TJ, Scotty, and Paul Zico. Um, it's a great podcast. It was awesome. Their audience has been really cool. Um, we had a phenomenal time. Um, you guys can go watch the episode that we shot if you subscribe to their pod to their Patreon. Um, I wanted to post their Patreon um, real quick. You can go watch the episode I was on. I'm going to post it right here. It's very rare that I promote other people's Patreons. But given that I'm on an episode here and I think it's a really good episode, I think you guys should go check it out. Um, yeah, the, the energy was really good. Their audience really liked me and I really liked being there. We ended up going really long and I got drunk at the end of the stream and stayed for their after show. And you get access to both the main show and the after show. If you go to their podcast, you can go watch the episode. It's like nine hours of nonstop fun. It was one of the most it was one of the most fun things I've done in a long time. I had a genuinely awesome time over on Deep Fat Fried. However, that is all sort of secondary, I guess, to what I'm talking about right now, which is that I had an argument with Paul's ego. And I don't agree with Paul's ego on everything. And in fact, Paul's ego and I have an interesting dynamic. We disagree on a lot, but we have a, there's something about the way that we communicate that we're able to talk to each other in what I consider to be a fairly productive manner. And I've really enjoyed my arguments with Paul's ego. Um, even if, even though there's been points where we very strongly disagreed. Um, and on the most recent podcast with Paul's ego, um, we argued about Joe Biden and we argued about uh, voter stuff and about voting and about electoralism. And I tend to have a fairly unique approach here uh, in these spaces. I am, despite being a very far lefty type, I don't really spend a lot of time doing anti-voting rhetoric or whatever. I just don't think it's a productive framework. And I also think that there can be good things that come from voting. Um, and uh, But I also uh, uh, am not a super pro-voting person. But Paul's ego kind of got me on something. And I feel kind of bad about it. And I want to talk about that and own up to it and go forward with it if I can and hopefully have it be productive. Um, there's a lot of stuff that Paul's ego says about voting that I don't 100% agree with. He has a lot more hope for third parties than I do. I think that most thir third party candidates are like a close to being scammers. Like uh, they're not legally scammers, but in my opinion, they're about as close as you can get without breaking the law. They have no chance at winning. They sell people this message of, uh, of, of getting onto the debate stage and they mostly use it to sell books and make money and, and give themselves a salary for multiple years, sometimes a very high salary. Um, so I don't agree with him very much on third parties. And I don't agree with him very much on uh, on, you know, his approach towards not voting for Biden or whatever. But he did get me on one thing. And I've been thinking about it a bunch. And I, I, I feel like it's important for me to actually talk about it. Which is that I think he's right that we've been 
that I've been, I don't want to say we, because I don't want to talk for anybody else, but that I have not been hard enough on Biden. And some of that, uh, he, he said this on the podcast. He said, oh, you know, there's so many lefties and, you know, maybe it's even, and, and, you know, he wasn't super direct towards me, but he did imply that it was me as well. You know, he said there's so many lefties who basically just kind of defend him a lot. And the reality is that um, I don't defend Biden basically at all, but I certainly haven't spent all that much time criticizing him. And most of my criticisms of him have been fairly recently on Israel-Palestine, which I, I feel was a good reason to, to criticize him. And I think I stand by my criticisms of Joe Biden on Israel-Palestine. I have never said anything even remotely positive, and I've made entire segments about it at great detriment to my channel. Um, so I think I did okay on that issue. But I've neglected other issues. And I want to give an example of this immediately, um, which I have prepared here because it's it's the sort of thing that uh, it's the sort of thing that I've made mistakes about. And, and I and I do feel bad about it because I do spend I have in many over the years of my show and my show has changed a lot. I'm not saying like I've I've done a critical disservice or whatever. Um, I've. But in the history of my show, I've spent a lot of time going after Donald Trump. Obviously, I've spent a lot of time criticizing uh, Dems in various ways. But I've never, I, I, I don't feel like I've done a good enough job on this particular issue. And that is on trans issues. And that is an issue that is of incredible importance to me. And I feel like I haven't done a good job of criticizing Biden on it. And Paul's critique of me is what made me realize this. So I, I have to give credit to Paul for that. And I have to own up to the fact that it's true. That despite the fact that I do tons, I, I'm proud of my videos that I do. I talk about gender in the abstract all the time. I have, for, I don't really know what the instinct was. Maybe it's just because of that I think it's mostly just because of what Paul points out that it's like there's an instinct that because Trump is so bad that you feel like you shouldn't criticize Biden or whatever because you're you're afraid. But it's true. I feel like I've let Biden off the hook because Trump was so bad that I have let Biden off the hook in ways that I shouldn't have. And this is like one of my main issues. Trans issues are one of the things I talk about the most. And it's in retrospect, looking back at how I've behaved for the last few years, I feel like I haven't gone hard enough on Biden. And I genuinely think that's a mistake. And should Biden win again, I will correct that mistake. Um, obviously, I don't do as much, you know, news politics coverage as I used to. Uh, these days, and this has been true for a while, I tend to talk about issues a lot more in the abstract. But I still do, I still do talk about news politics sometimes. I still do delve in on these issues. And I simply haven't done a good enough job on Biden. Let me give you an, a very specific example of what I'm talking about, okay? This is a tweet from Alejandra Caraballo, also S-Queer on Twitter, okay? Biden to trans veterans, drop dead. Absolutely unconscionable for Biden for the Biden administration to completely abandon trans veterans after promising to provide them health care two years ago. A completely broken promise. Now, this is a letter here from the Secretary of Veterans Affairs in Washington. And let's just be clear. Joe Biden is not just the president, but he is the commander in chief. He has the ability, as Trump proved, he has the ability to unilaterally make decisions about the military from his position as the absolute authority in the military. So there's no excuse here for Biden. There's no uh, parliamentarian excuse. There's no blaming the Republicans. This is a failure of him and his administration. And this failure, as is outlined in this very long and wordy letter, which I'm going to summarize, um is is basically the 
uh, uh, the, 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 the military has decided that they are not going to provide coverage for transgender affirming surgeries. They will cover HRT, which they had better, obviously. That's like the cheapest, least, you know, like most affordable, least expensive part. They are going to cover pre-op and post-op care, which is basically like if you need stuff, if you need to have your things in your health taken care of before you go to surgery, and if you need recovery help afterwards, but they won't actually cover the surgeries themselves, which are the most expensive, most risky, most difficult to come, you know, to get taken care of things. And the military has declined um, to actually cover those things. Now, um, there's a great quote attached here. Biden to transgender Americans, your president has your back. At the very beginning of Biden's presidency, and while he was running for president, he was certainly happy to try and win over our votes by promising to have our back, and he hasn't. In 2022 and 2021, and now, and, and into 2023, and now all the way into 2024, America has experienced an insane uptick in hate, uh, in hate rhetoric, hate crimes, um, and hate fueled legislation against transgender Americans. And Joe Biden has completely and utterly failed to do anything about it. Joe Biden has an undue position of influence on social issues. He could be talking about these issues in a beneficial way every single day. He could be intervening, using his party, directing his party to fight back as state after state after state passes disgusting and unconstitutional bathroom bans, as they pass disgusting and unconstitutional genital inspection laws, as they, pa as they ban trans people from sports as they start to target trans people's ability to live in life, as they pass disgusting uh, uh, intrusions on medical rights by banning trans health care for, uh, for minors, banning trans health care for some adults, in, as, as Republican governments insert themselves into the medical lives of trans Americans, Joe Biden has done nothing. And Joe Biden has no excuse on this military one. Donald Trump banned trans people from the military by executive order. He used his, his position as commander in chief to unilaterally drive trans people out of the military which is a statement. Even if you say the military is probably a dangerous place for trans people to be, which I would agree with you, the, fa the statement is what matters there. And also the fact that it's just a disgusting, uh, uh, generally a disgusting example of prejudice and discrimination. But the fact that Donald Trump was willing to use the executive position of being the commander in chief that he was willing to say to use that to 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 basically shine the spotlight on trans people and say you aren't even fit enough to serve your country as a soldier and joe biden can't even use that position to make sure that his promise that trans veterans will be taken care of is fulfilled that he won't even give them surgery that they need, that we know that they need, that every single me medical authority on the planet acknowledges improves the life conditions, the mental health, and the life outcomes of trans people, that he can't even do that is fucking pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. And I can tell you this much. I'm not going to play nice on this front anymore because... Paul's ego was right about that. He's right that I have pulled punches. I've pulled punches. And it required me sitting down and having that conversation in the way that I did to realize that I had pulled punches out of, out of a stupidly formed fear, out of a fear uh, of, 
uh, out, out of not even fear, just buying the fear mongering propaganda of the Democratic Party. When the Democratic Party excuses their poor actions by going, well, you know, wouldn't it be terrible if if it it's like a it's like a uh, it's a threat. They go, oh, it'd be a shame if this bad guy fucked up your life. Oh. You're a trans person suffering in America? Well, you better do what we will or else that guy's going to fuck you up, right? It's a shakedown. And it's gross. And it's disgusting. And I've fallen unintentionally for that portion of their propaganda. I don't want to overstate. You know, I don't want to sit here and pretend like I've been friendly towards Biden. I don't even think anybody can remember the last time I said something positive about Biden on this stream. But the reality is that I should have been ripping into him on this, and I've spent a lot of time just criticizing conservatives, when in reality, Joe Biden is in power. The Democrats are in power right now, and they have fucking zipped right up. And they have let this spread. They are, they are literally sacrificing trans people on a on on an altar we're the smallest percentage of people in this country and the right wing is obsessed with us they are hyper fixated on us they're it's ridiculous and the crazy thing of the most craziest thing of all is that they're not even winning the, the, the Republicans fixating on trans people loses them elections. And even still, the Democratic Party is unwilling to have the spine to say, we are going to fight for trans people. No, because they would rather let trans people be on the altar, be fixated on. They would l rather let these hyper red states destroy the lives of trans people so that they can try and make a case the, of, of lesser evilism. And that is what's happening. Joe Biden, it is a crisis. It is insane to me that there are dozens now of states that are screaming towards the eradication of trans people, that are advancing unheard of levels of invasions of privacy, invasion on medical rights, infringement of people's privacy. They're... Injecting themselves into bathrooms. And Joe Biden is okay with sitting there because that look that makes for a hell of a scary news story. But and we're a tiny population, okay? In a lot of these red states, the trans people can survive. There are things they can do to fight back, but they are outnumbered in a lot of these red states. They need in the in the myth of the of the democratic republic they need good people on the federal level to watch out for them and protect them and where has joe biden and the democratic party been where the fuck have they been nowhere they've been nowhere they've been gone they've been spending their time as sending money to fucking israel they've been spending their their time on tv lying to the people in favor of Netanyahu. They've been spending their time saying, you better vote for us or that guy's going to fuck you up. And this is, this is the perfect example of this, where the power is completely in Joe Biden's hand. The power to make this decision about the military is complete. He is the commander in chief. He could make this change now for a group of people that is being disgustingly discriminated against, and he won't. Because he's decided that people like me, he's decided like people like you out there in the audience are a worthy sacrifice so that him and his party can have the weakest claim to electoral power. It really does say everything you need to know about the current state of the Dems that the Dems right now have no will to power, that the, the, the Dems right now have no real plan. They have no, and, and as each day goes on, I get more and more worried that we might actually lose uh, the election to Donald Trump, that Donald Trump might win the election again, that there's a real possibility that's the case, and there's fucking nothing 
that any of us can do about it because it's Joe Biden being the densest, most ignorant motherfucker you can possibly imagine from the pulpit of the White House, that he is sitting there and doing nothing, that they are not taking this election seriously. And in all of that, he can't even work up the spine to stand up for 1% of Americans that the right wing has decided deserve to be persecuted. It is the easiest, the easiest win that you could possibly ever get. It would be a symbolic win. It would be a refutation of everything that Trump stood for, and he won't even do it because their current plan is to just always win by default. And isn't that an indictment of everything wrong with American politics? It seriously bothers me, and I think it's a mistake that I've made. I think that... I'm not going to make that mistake again. So there you have it. That was the real thing that I needed to apologize for and own up to. Now you've heard it. Now you've seen me own up to the fact that I have let myself make a mistake in not screaming about this stuff earlier, in not pointing out the fact that um, as Florida and Utah and uh, Alabama spin off into genuinely dystopian genocidal states towards tra trans people. As, as Florida has now made it uh, illegal for trans people to change their, their gender identity on their licenses. Which, by the way, is wild because Obama had addressed that Trump let it lapse and, and Biden didn't bring it back. And he was a part of the Biden, he was a part of the Obama administration. Ah, it's so bad. We now have a country where from state to state, trans people like myself have no guarantee of civil rights on complete bullshit grounds. We have a moral panic spreading across this country and no one with a voice is actually able to push back on it. Nobody with the power to do so will do so because they are fucking cowards who are asleep at the wheel. And the Joe Biden administration is completely asleep at the wheel. Their conceptualization of politics, whoever's running the machine up there has a conception of politics that's 30 years old. They are not engaging with the reality. They can't even engage that they are alienating their own voter base over Israel-Palestine. They literally keep telling us it won't matter. It's been, it's fucking February and it still matters. Everyone is still pissed off about it. And they keep saying, oh, people will forget about it. People will forget about it. And they haven't. In fact, they're more pissed off about it. They're destroying their own chances at keeping Trump out of office because they're so disconnected. I got very fired up about this, but the truth is that I feel very angry about it. And I feel regret. I feel regret that I didn't go even harder about this because it is true that I've spent a lot of time going after the real perpetrators, okay? The, the Republicans are the perpetrators of this shit, okay? They spend all day, every day, laundering a disgusting uh, a culture war But the Democrats know that this is happening and they're not doing anything about it. They know it's happening. They obviously know it's happening. They can acknowledge it when pressed, but they won't do anything because they think that they're going to what? Alienate purple voters or something? Newsflash, the purple voter is has never been less important, okay? No joke. I'm not even kidding you. The undecided purple voter is not even a relevant factor. You have a Trump cult, an incredibly dense Trump cult that will vote for nobody except for Donald Trump. And then you have an enormous pool of Democrats uh, who are anywhere from hyper activated to a large pool of people who feel totally uh checked out because they they have they no longer believe that politics will work for them at all and the reason for that is because of joe biden because joe biden hasn't made has had the power and hasn't made politics work for them that joe biden took obvious l's for no reason 
and those people just have to be activated in the slightest bit. They just need to see a little bit of strength. They just need to, to hear stories of the little guy being watched out for. They're people who are activated by a sense of justice. When they hear Joe Biden intervene to protect trans people, a an endangered minority, they go, yeah, maybe Joe Biden is a good guy. When they hear Obama say, I'm gonna bring change, they go, I'd like change. And they haven't been hearing that and they're not active. There's no fucking purple voter. And these motherfuckers are afraid to take any action in favor of, of, of their purported worldview because they think there's a purple voter that hasn't existed in fucking 20 years. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I don't have much else to rant about on this. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be hitting, I'm going to be, I'm going to be hitting these issues harder and I'm going to be criticizing Joe Biden harder because he's a big boy. Okay. He's the biggest boy in the country. And if people can't see that this is a big issue, then no one's going to be thinking about it. Okay. And this fucking culture war against trans people is going to continue. And I don't want it to continue because it's nightmarish and it's hurting people that, that are important to me, okay? And I'm very happy that there are blue states that are safer, okay? That's great. But Joe Biden has barely goddamn helped that. That's been the hard work of people in each of those blue states. That's been the hard work of people here in Washington, the hard work of people in Oregon, the hard work of people in California, Vermont, Maine. Thank you all for hearing me out. And if you're not subscribed to me, Make sure you hit subscribe down below because this is the type of stuff you can expect from me. While I haven't been as good at criticizing Joe Biden as I could have been, you guys and my fans will tell you I've been damn good nonetheless. It's just I'm always trying to improve, okay? I'm always trying to do better. And I love it when somebody is able to help me see a way in which I can do better, a way in which I may have made a mistake, a way that I can hone my message and hone my show even more. And in this case, one of the things I got to do is I got to go harder on this guy because uh, this is not acceptable. It's not acceptable at all. Anyway, make sure you hit subscribe to Demon Mama down below. Thank you so much.